Good morning. Good morning to one and all. All right, uh, good morning. Good morning, sir. Very good morning. All right. Okay, slowly people are joining in. Okay. Uh, in the meantime, uh, till people join, all of them join, uh, let's try to do a small recap of what we did in the last session. Uh, can somebody just uh, hint me some of the points that we discussed in the last session? Anybody? Just just a few points. Anything that you that comes to your mind, anything that you remember, but what we are talking about. Feedbacks, focus point. Yeah, very good, very good. So, uh, we were in the, in the topics of customer satisfaction, and uh, we were trying to understand who is a customer, uh, what are the characteristics of a customer. And how does a organization uh, which produces products really understand uh, what the customer needs are? So there are various different aspects of uh, when you consider uh, while developing a product. Okay, uh, there are uh, what to say motivators for you to develop a product. Uh, supposedly, if you have resource material, uh, basically the uh, material required to produce a uh, uh, product. If you have in bulk or in uh, large uh, quantities, then that is a motivation. For example, uh, if you have a lot of cotton with you, you are motivated to uh, work on uh, something that you can do with cotton. So you look at the textile industry, right? So uh, like that, there are various reasons when um, uh, people who build organizations look at various aspects. And then one of the most important aspect is the customer right the person who buys your product so in this regard we try to understand uh, when a customer is trying to buy a product quality of a product is going to be a very important aspect and then we found we try to uh, dissect the uh, characteristics of human ways in which he is going to characterize the quality so we found that uh, there are many uh, criteria or parameters that we can do as far as I remember, we discussed uh, six different parameters. Uh, can anybody prompt me to uh, remember them? The first one was the performance measures, right? The performance parameters where uh, availability of the product and uh, or, or to say reliability of the product and then a uh, few other parameters decided what the customer will uh, look at the performance would be. Then uh, the second one was uh, about uh, features of the product. The third one was about uh, what? Can somebody prompt? Service. Correct, service, absolutely. Price, warranty. Price. Very good, warranty, very good. Anybody? The last one and the most important one we discussed was? 
remember reputation right reputation of a product is very important to decide the quality right the moment we say that uh, okay this product is been developed by let us say uh, mercedes benz or uh, yeah so you know that it's a, it's going to be a quality product but when i say it is going to be developed by uh, let us say some some other company then uh, you might give second thoughts to really go and understand the quality right so these were some of the very basic things that we learned and then when it came to really understanding after a product has been produced and then sold the customer uh, is going to experience the product right so once he experience the product he is going to come up with some kind of a outcome okay is going to be a satisfied customer or is going to be an unsatisfied customer or is going to be a customer who is delighted with your product right and then uh, we did some uh, what to say analysis of how to understand uh, uh, the customers uh, feelings about the product through the feedback mechanisms i think that is was that was the last topics that we discussed in the session so there are various uh, modes in which feedbacks could be taken one of them were the comment cards so we we came across comment cards uh, uh, when you buy a product it, uh, the comment card comes along with the product itself right so it's a card wherein you write some details about yourself and your first time uh, feelings about the product and then you post it back then there were questionnaires and questionnaires we do we do we spend some good time to really understand uh, uh questionnaires uh, as they could be an online questionnaire or it could be an offline questionnaire we try to understand that when you are trying to ask something from a customer you have to be quick you have to frame your questions such a way that you're going to get maximum information that you need from the customer so it's it's a what to say uh, subject in itself to really uh, ponder over what should be the kind of questions that needs to be asked from a customer right and uh, we also said there was a saying okay uh, the kind of answer that you want depends upon the kind of question that you ask right so all this was what we discussed in the last classes right so in today's session in continuation uh, today i i want to end up with the customer and then probably move into the other part of the customer which is the internal customer so all this while we were talking about the external customer so i just want to quickly move over today to the internal customer which is the employees okay how employees and their contribution is going to add to the value of a or quality of a product so that is what we will be discussing today so before we jump into uh, the employee i just want to give a final uh, wrap up session on the customer part which is the external uh, customer right so what we know about is uh, whenever a certain uh, uh, good is being produced okay these goods can be either products or service i i hope you Are are in sync with me to really understand what I'm trying to communicate here. So, uh, a product can be followed with the custom with the service, or the service itself could be a product. Okay. Can you give me some examples of service which is followed with the product, and there, can you give me some examples of where service itself is a product? Can you tell me? anybody anybody who has some idea okay so if you buy a car it's a product right and then after the product is bought you go back to the same uh, seller for the service of that particular product right it needs to be serviced annually routinely to ensure that its working is there but look at another kind of a product right all of you have bank accounts right you're all uh, what is a customers of a bank there is no tangible product from a bank all they do is service to you right so service itself is the product i hope uh, the, there is a proper distinction that has evolved in this uh, example right so there are tangible products and then there are 
services which are intangible products okay now today our uh, one of the topics that i want to uh, what to say um, raise is is quality of a product more important or service of a product more important uh, let us not get into the uh, what to say uh, service as a product okay let us take up a normal product uh, like it could be a fan that you have purchased it could be a tv that you have purchased or it could be a mobile that you have purchased okay and then you purchased your product based on certain criteria now what are those criteria we have already discussed right so based on those criteria you bought it now after you buy the what to say product is a service a really an important aspect or the product is an important aspect this is very important uh, what to say judgmental uh, point i want you people to contribute can somebody add up your view points service more important or product more important if you go to a hotel is the food more important or the service more important i think i simplified the question Varun, you want to answer? Likit. Food, sir. Okay, food is food. You say food is important. Okay, we will come back to that. They want you. What is your opinion? Amit, food, sir. Food is important. Okay. What about uh, uh, Chitra Shri? Divya. Both, sir. Both. Okay. Somebody yeah. who. who has uh, a okay opinion anybody who wants to say that the service is more important anybody i believe that my it's my personal opinion okay there you can always differ from me but i believe that service is more important than the food why because you are hungry and when you go to a restaurant and if the restaurant guy gives you a food you are bound to eat the food because you are hungry okay but think about it if the same food whether it is good or bad if he gives is gives you to I mean makes you sit in a very filthy place and eat that particular food or he throws the food at you or the plates are not clean would you really have that food even though you are hungry come on i want i want opinions no sir yeah no, sir. so that's more important so i mean no, of course you can always debate debate about it okay we can have a it varies from product to product okay you can go to a jewelry shop and then uh, you are trying to buy a jewelry if the seller is not so what to say kanju uh, or what to say uh, good with you okay he doesn't have a very smiley face and then uh, he is uh, trying to sell a product well, you are you need a product okay so regardless of what the seller is uh, trying to uh give an ambience you will buy the product right or you may not buy the product so i i, I would uh, buy the product if the product is cheaper when compared to uh, other uh, what to say uh, uh shops that are selling so no i wouldn't okay but anyway so there are there will be different kinds of opinions that can come come over so when you generalize the uh, topic between a good and a service and then try to understand which is more important service of a uh, good is more important than a, the good itself because if the good works for one day and then if it is not working the service becomes more important for its durability people would not come back to you and uh, because i'm i'm building up all my information for the topic of today we being customer retention right customer retention is the topic that we need to discuss and uh, that will happen only if the customer Uh, has find something in your product 
that he is not able to find in your competitor in your pro, in the competitor's product right so we'll try to understand today what are those factors that is going to drive him to be retained with you to show some loyalty with your product right so that is the point of focus today so what uh, i'm trying to come down here since we have tried to conclude to the point that uh, service customer service is a very important factor that will determine uh, the quality of the product or the product being sellable or not okay uh, what is more important to for us to understand is what are the parameters that an organization would look into while considering the uh, what is a service right so first uh, you can also make a note of uh, some of the points that I'm trying to say. The first one is the organization. Okay. The organization which produces the product has to look into some of the characteristics of what it needs to do in terms of the service that it can provide to the customer to bring out certain uh, aspects of uh, what to say. Um, uh, delightment of in the in the uh, for the customer right so let me uh, rephrase what i'm trying to say here okay uh, let us say uh, identify what kind of a market segment that they are trying to produce the market the product right so supposedly uh, for example if the product that is being produced is a car okay what kind of a car needs to be produced okay you can't provide the same kind of a service to different kinds of products. What I mean to say here is, uh, uh, I hope you people are uh, in sync with me to understand the, the topic that I'm trying to portray here. Let me take you examples of hotels. Okay. Let us take an example of a Darshini. Let us take an example of a uh, decent uh, hotel where you sit and have uh, your lunch, okay? And there are uh, five-star hotels, right? Now, when it comes to customer service, customer service as an expectation from the customer will be different at a Darshni, will be different at a normal mediocre or medium-sized hotel, and the customer expectations of the service to be provided to him in a five-star hotel is different, right? So the organization has to really identify what kind of a product it is trying to produce and what kind for a, what, what, what was the market segment that it is trying to uh, target. Okay, so depending on that, the organization should uh, strategize its, uh, uh, what to say, strategies for customer uh, to provide service for the customer, right? Then usually when you uh, go to let us to a, to a supermarket right what are your expectations from you from a supermarket you expect all the products that you want to be available there okay then you want the minimum of the what is a pricing that could be there for the product to be available in that particular store after all these things when you take uh, the products that you want and put it in your cart and then when you come to the billing counter, if the line of the billing counter is huge, okay, do you really uh, are happy with the purchase that you will be doing? No, you, you want a quick service to happen. You want you to uh, the billing to happen as quickly as possible, right? So taking care of the customer is a very, very important aspect uh, for, uh, a pro for a producing company, right? Product might be good, but your service is even more important to retain that particular customer. Very, very important points that I'm talking about. Okay. Because loyalty from a customer is very difficult to get. Okay. There is a case study which we will discuss once, once we are all meeting uh, in, uh, in, uh, in uh, what is in person in classroom. Okay. Where we will take up certain examples of case studies and try to really understand uh, human perception as a customer okay so there was a study that was done by uh, what to say uh, this uh, hair oil company all this parachute and uh, what smith lang gasco and all those people marico and all those big companies did a study okay 
so when they when when i say a study they they try to understand uh, the uh, customers opinion about their products or it could be generically about any product that they are trying to like let us say hair oils okay hair oil what is the general uh, uh, requirement from a hair oil what why do you uh, put hair oil to your hairs can somebody tell me girls can pitch in Manasa, why do you put hair oil to your hair? Growth of the hair, sir. For growth of the hair, that's one of the points. So you can put castor oil to your hair. Do you actually put castor oil to your hair for hair growth? No, sir. What oil do you put? Coconut oil. Do you do you buy coconut oil in the raw form from uh, a coconut store and you put? No, sir. Actually, we'll get it naturally from my mother's place. Okay, uh, okay, uh, I, I won't question that. But usually, if you're city born people and all, most of them are addicted to uh, things like either uh, parachute or some other, uh, uh, what to say, oil that has been generated. So, one of, if at all, if I ask you, okay, in general, Mansa or uh, Divya or any of the girls that who are there online, if I ask you, what are your expectations from a hair oil? Can you tell me? One, one of each one of you can give me a point. Thick hair, thick on long thick hair. hair. Okay, you want the hair to be thick, but after the use of the oil. Okay, then the mm. oil itself nourishes. No, no, the so hair. I, I don't want the outcome of putting oil on your hair. What do you expect from the oil? That you tell me. Less hair fall, sir. No, that is an outcome. That's an outcome after you apply oil to your hair. You may have less of your hair fall. The oil itself. What are the characteristics of oil of the hair oil that you expect to be there? When I say characteristics, if I give you a, a red color oil, would you buy it? No, it should be like easy to maintain and it shouldn't be all over the place. Okay. Divya, when Andy. You say, yeah. When you say easy to maintain, uh, li, dissect it a little more and say, okay, uh, the, you are hitting the point, but you are a little crude. I want you to be even more specific. Do you want the oil to be very sticky, thick, or you want it to be light? No. And, yeah, it should be light. Uh, it should be easy to maintain. It's not like once you put it, you can't move and you can't like, you know, do your other activities. Okay. Uh, second thing. Okay. If if you put hair oil and somebody comes to you, to near you and he yeah, sees yeah. that it is stinking. Okay. Would you really like to wear that particular oil? Mm, no, no. You want some, some kind of a fragrance to be there some in that fragrance. particular oil. So I hope yeah. you're now trying to understand what I mean by characteristics of an oil. You want the oil to be pro, what light, you want the oil to be colorless, you want the oil to be scented. You're understanding, okay? Yeah. If I give you the oil in a in a clay pot, would you take that particular product? No, that's you what want, I meant by like handy. Uh, yeah, you, you want it something, yeah, handy, you want it something to be ergonomic, you want something it to be, right? So, what I'm trying to tell here is, the fact of everything is the hair oil, okay? The hair oil is just something that is going to nourish your hair to grow uh, grow your hair wet. Well. So that was the original concept of hair oil, right? But as you keep on, when you want to buy, these are certain, you, what is the evolutions of uh, characteristics of hair oil that is getting evolved, right? Uh, boys can also pitch in. I think I'm the only person who is bald who is not eligible to talk about hair oils, but rest of them can, I believe, right? Come on, you're allowed to laugh. <laughs> okay, okay. I, I mean, I just wanted to uh, lift the, um, how to say, uh, tempo here. All right. So, uh, yeah. So, hair oil, so one of the important, uh, why I started this particular topic was, a company started asking people to really understand what they expect from a hair oil. Okay. And once they started asking people about uh, all these things, okay, people started telling, yeah, as uh, you people started telling that I want oil to be lightweight, I want oil to be colorless, I want it to be as maneuverable as possible, I want it to be scented, I want it to be jasmine flavored, I want it to be some other flavored or scented and all those stuff. Okay. So, now the company 
uh, gathered all this uh, information and then they started work, uh, gave this as an input to their R&D, right? So the R&D, they spent a huge amount of money in developing products uh, that will have all these qualities, right? So if at all, if I ask you, how is it possible for me to make the oil to be thin? So there has to be some kind of a processing that needs to be done, right? The oil needs to be needed or all whatever is that made to run through different kinds of chemical process to basically reduce its stickiness and all the stuff, okay? And so what is happening here is, you got the information from the customer and you you passed on the information to the r d which started the and you spent money on the r d to produce a product that is very much fulfilling the requirements of the customer right so finally when you come up with a product with all these characteristics do you really think that this product will be by, bought by the customer who uh, who gave you all these uh, opinions the fact was no the fact was no what came as an outcome was, I mean, yeah, it's a case study and this is what has happened, okay? They found out that after all the deliberations of, uh, what to say, taking up information from the customer and uh, uh, trying to understand what he actually uh, expects from that particular product and uh, finally coming up with the product, they found out that the customer would always go and buy an equivalent of all these features, which is less in cost. Some company which uh, produces such, pro, uh, what to say, product would have spent a lot of money on R&D and they would really try to recover the money through the product itself, right? So the product will be highly priced, little higher priced. And pricing will be, a, what to say, a main factor uh, for people to buy such product, products, right? So it is very important uh, for people to remember that uh, an organization will fail if it is really going by the words of the customer so you have to really extract the hidden aspects of what the uh, customer is really expecting from the product right so uh, yeah so we were talking about a service of a particular uh, product so meeting the customer's expectations is very important for a product for the service of that particular product and you should also get a customer's viewpoint of the service so somebody, if at all you have a car and uh, um, why do you go to a service station to get your car serviced? Because you'll have an intention, right? Maybe you are going out of station tomorrow. So you want to have a car which will not break down. So you are going to a service station to get it serviced, right? And when you go to the service station and the service guy stays, it will take three days for me to service your car. Then you're not happy because your intention of getting the car serviced is not meeting met, right? So you have to find out what is the customer's point of view right and the most important uh, point that you need to uh, remember is a customer is being promised with something all right so there was something that you told when you say when you when you are selling the product you sell the product with a promise and please ensure that the product or the service fulfills the promise that you have promised so deliver what is promised so that is an important aspect to do all these things a customer care uh, department needs to be developed right so there has to be an organization should have a customer care uh, aspect to uh, element okay to look into the customer's care then the third so the first one is the organization so the organization will have to look into what the customer is uh, what kind of a segment are they uh, looking into what kind of services are supposed to be provided for uh, to augment the product and all those stuff then when it came to the uh, customer customer uh, care sh department should care, should ensure that what kind of services needs to be provided uh, what is the customer's point of view what what was promised is it being delivered and all the stuff now the third important point is the communication very important right so whatever you intend to tell about your product must be spoken or communicated in full must be communicated in full right and uh, there should be no, no no kind of a trade off between what you intend and what you say uh there will be uh, i don't know many people would have um, 
uh, what to say, come across this uh, small uh, mm -hmm, shops where they, they would have put 400 rupees as the price of a beautiful jokin, let us say. Okay. They would have put a board saying that 400 rupees. So you are all tempted to buy that particular because you know the uh, what to say price of the jerkin would be no less than 2000 or 3000 rupees and uh, you try to go and uh, buy it for 400 rupees because it says rupees 400 but when you actually go at the corner bottom of that particular board they would have written off that means to say they intend to give you 400 rupees off on the price of that particular product but you think that it is worth 400 rupees only right so these are communication gaps that actually exist, right? So you should be very clear about what the product is capable of. You should be very clear in communicating that to the product, right? So you should you should provide the knowledge about the product and how it will perform. So all these things can happen only when your product has been properly tested, right? And all those stuff. Then. So the third one is the communication part and parcel of our different elements of a customer service. The fourth one is the most important and it is called as the frontline people. Okay. The people who actually who are the, uh, what to say, uh, liaison between the customer and the product. Okay. So you go to a showroom and when you are trying to buy a mobile, let us say, if you have uh, a store automated store with no sellers, only all the mobiles have been displayed and then you are supposed to only one cashier is there where uh, he will be billing your uh, mobiles do you really think that you can go and buy a mobile in that particular shop you can't because i have experienced it until unless somebody gives you enough information and kind of motivates you to buy you are not actually have the capability to decide on your own not many of if 100 people walk into a customer walk into a store about 90 people or don't have don't have an idea about what they are what they are wanting to buy only there are 10 people who already know this is what i want i want to buy a samsung uh, let us say s10 mobile or s20 mobile and uh, it has to this is the price i am supposed to pay for this so all the, all the homework is done then you walk into the store and then you buy there are only uh, 10 out of 100 such people who are there the 90 percent of the people are not aware of what they want to buy but they want to buy a mobile right so they come into the store looking for somebody to motivate them to buy all right so then the frontline people become the most important people who can give uh, uh, people information about what the product is and try to portray how important it is to um, what to say uh, to have certain uh, aspects, right? So this is very important. Uh, so they also serve the internal customer also. So we will talk about, they are also the internal customers, right? So the frontline people are also the internal customers. So we, when it comes to the employee satisfaction part, we will talk about more about all those things, right? Okay. Uh, can we, uh, I don't know, uh, the sessions, the recordings will happen for only 40 minutes. Uh, after six minutes, I think I, I will just uh, log out and then log in. You people kindly be in the meeting so that uh, my new session of recordings can happen. Okay. So that is about that. So after the frontline people, the next important is the leadership. What kind of leadership is the organization happening? Does the organization have, have an autocratic kind of a leadership where it's a dictatorship kind of a rule where one person says this is how uh, you have to uh, deal with the customer and that's how it has to be dealt or it is going to be a participatory kind of a uh, environment where uh, you uh, the leaders actually become part of the uh, process of providing customer service, right? So these are some of the important points and with regard to that, uh, we saw in the last class uh, about the organizational, uh, what to say, how to uh, translate these requirements into uh, customers feedback into requirements. Okay. So that was done using a model called as a Kano charts. Okay. Kano models, right. 
so let me try to share we are i i think i did this in the last class also okay so this was the kano model where you have three different curves right the middle curve which is a diagonal line okay so this talks about the uh, obvious expectations from the customer and which can which are very visible uh, to be fulfilled okay and then you try to uh, fulfill this particular organization's uh, what to say requirements so this is the diagonal line which is going to represent that so they are easily identifiable and their performance can be evaluated very easily right now there is a curve above that there is a curve above that called as innovations this is an important uh, what to say um, curve that is going to make a lot of difference in whether the customer is going to come back to your product or not see the diagonal curve is going to ensure that the customer is satisfied satisfaction by a customer does not ensure you retention of the customer right so only when the customer finds something extra that's when he is motivated to come and buy your product for example when you go to a store you have already had britannia mari okay when you go back to the store to buy biscuit again would you really buy britannia mari or you would go you would try to you would like to try sunfish mari or parle mari or any other uh, what to say uh, biscuit manufacturing company that is very popular so there is an obvious choice that is available if britannia wants you to make you buy britannia mari only then it has to have something that will make you go and ask the customer ask the seller that give me britannia right so that will be there which is in this particular curve above the diagonal which is called as the innovations curve where they try to add something like uh, mari light or they try to put some uh, grains which are healthy something based out on oats or something like that right or make some um, bring some ambassador who is very popular who can reach out to people and then through him you motivate them right so all these things are uh, is very very important and then there is a curve below here okay which is something which is very very important if you don't uh, and really understand this particular curve your product will never sell these are some of the unspoken expectations of the customer unspoken expectations of the customer is very very important because the customer will not tell to the to you that this is what i need from this particular product he expects it to be by default for example when you go to a hotel by default you expect the food to be hot you are understanding he can give you a hot food or he can give you a piping hot food or he can give you a stale food right but by default it is expected to be certain things right if you don't meet that particular requirements then your what to say uh, uh, product will not get sold right so this is a very important thing kano model okay so after the kano model okay uh, we will try to understand the voice of a customer okay so what is the voice of a customer is there is a uh, what to say chart here that will describe about the voice of a customer right so the voice of a customer is understood through this particular flow chart okay where you you try to gather information uh, from the customer through various different surveys various different focus groups you have customer reports design reviews interviews site visits and all this stuff and how we do you evaluate this particular reviews that is more important we will do this in the last module of the uh, tqm okay where there are different kinds of methods using which you really try to understand the voice of the customer and then uh, you differentiate customer as internal and external and you you have uh, people who will do that okay uh, and try to do the job of understanding the voice of a customer finally you land up with the voice of a customer now this uh, flow is very important because uh, one of your questions in your vtu was asked on um, how do you determine the voice of your customer so you can write a lengthy answer but this is the uh, chart that is required right um so what i'll do is in case now that the video uh, recording has stopped okay uh, i will just try to once the mm, session